This might be my biggest book haul ever. Hi, I'm Alex. This is Pucks and Paperbacks and welcome to a book haul. I have so many books here. I went to a library book sale a couple weeks ago and I hit the jackpot. I also have ordered some things. I have publisher mail and I'm gonna show you some books that I bought for videos. Since I have so much here, I'm gonna get right into it. If you enjoy this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. It really helps on my channel when you do so. And by leaving a comment, I'll link my last book haul up above. Let's get to the books. I'm going to start the library book sale because I got so many great things. If you're new here, my favorite childhood author is Beverly Cleary and throughout the last couple years, I have been creating a collection of her books. So whenever I go to library book sales, this is where I find the most of her books. So I ended up getting four. <laughs> I had to stop myself honestly because there were so many. I will say I am collecting the paperbacks and they did have a lot of hardbacks there. So I got Strider, which I haven't read, Henry and the Paper Route, Henry Huggins, and Runaway Ralph. I'm very happy to have these in my collection. On the note of nostalgic books, I also grabbed this. I can't believe somebody was donating this. I'm glad they were because now I own a copy, but there were so many of these and I was just like, you wouldn't want to keep them. I don't know, maybe that's just me and I'm like I need to keep everything I have but I'm so glad that I saw this. I wasn't gonna get it at first but I was like you know what when am I ever going to get a chance to have one of these and if you don't know this is Meet Samantha and American Girl. This is Samantha's book. I had her along with Kit and the dolls that are like make your own or whatever. I loved American Girl dolls as a kid. I'm a simmer so I love dressing up my sims as well as building. So American Girls were amazing for me. I loved them so much and was very sad when that phase ended for a lot of people. <laughs> but I'm really glad to have this because I don't think I've ever even read their books before. But I think that this is just a good nostalgic thing to have in my book collection. I don't know how this was there, but I grabbed this so quickly. If you're a PBS kid, you will know exactly what this book is. Can you believe this? Can you even believe? I sent this to my brother so quick. I sent him a picture and I was like, look at this. Oh my God. I love this. I'm just gonna have a book collection of nostalgia and I love that. I'm a millennial, I love nostalgia, and I'm glad that I can have these a part of my collection. So this is Zoom, Fun Outside. It has 50 plus awesome outdoor games, experiments, picnics, and more from the hit PBS kids show. If you don't know what this is, I will put a little clip here. I feel like I talked about it in like one of my childhood reading videos. Zoom is, how do I really explain it? It's like a lot, bunch of kids is just doing like various activities and it was the best show ever. <laughs> I'll put a little clip here so you know what I'm talking about. And last, I got a couple novels including Slam by Walter Dean Myers. I really loved Monster by him. And you can barely see this because it's glaring so much. A Mercy by Toni Morrison. For my most recent video where I read banned books, I started reading The Bluest Eye and I was really enjoying it, but I just didn't have the time to finish it. And honestly, it's a really heavy book. So I was like, I think I need to take my time with this and not rush it for a video. So I scrapped that book, but I am going to finish it at a later date. And because I really enjoyed the writing in that book, I wanted to pick up another Toni Morrison. So when I saw it, I had to have it. And last, I found a Louise Erdrich and I, I'm so shocked that it was there. This is Shadow Tag and I'm hoping to maybe read it in October or November. Those are everything from the library book haul. Like I said, I hit the jackpot. I was so thrilled with everything I got there. Next up is some books I bought for videos. I don't remember what video it was, but I said because I really enjoyed doing reading books based on my favorite movies, I would do my favorite TV shows. I love Food Network competition shows and I love the bears. So I have a lot of chef and kitchen like books, including Kitchen Confidential by Anthony Bourdain. I am so excited to read this as well as Notes from a Young Black Chef by Kwame Onowachi. And I am really excited to read this one as well. I'm gonna be adding in The Great Food Truck Race, which is literally one of my favorite shows on Food Network. And Tyler Florence is the host. So I was like, why don't I make something from his cookbook? But honestly, 
I wasn't really a big fan of this one. It's very old. I'm sure I can probably find something to make in it, but if not, you never saw this. Then a couple weeks ago, I was at my local Ollie's and I found this. Dear Haiti, Love Elaine by Mika Muli and Maritza Muli. I read this last year for the Amazing Readathon and I absolutely loved it. So once I saw it, I was like, I need to have this. It is about a girl who goes to visit her mom in Haiti and uncovers a lot of family drama. It's fantastic. I love it so much. And the last book for a video, this might be a 2025 video, honestly, because I just do not have the time to do anything in the next couple months because I already have things planned. I'm an avid watcher of food content here on YouTube, including Mythical Kitchen and Rosanna Pancino. And Mythical Kitchen has a series where they grab ingredients from one store and another. So like Walmart and Target or the dollar store and Aldi, something like that. And I was like, why don't I do that with books? So I got this from the dollar store. It is a rom-com, I believe, or like a women's fiction. The Most Likely Club by Elisa Friedland, Friedland. And you know why I picked it up? It says, at their milestone high school reunion, a group of friends make a pact to finally achieve their high school superlatives one way or another in this lively new novel from the acclaimed author of Last Summer at the Golden Hotel. I love the concept of a book set at a high school reunion and I believe I said it in my last book haul or some video. I don't know. Time isn't real. I said that I was planning to write a book about someone going to their high school reunion and so this would be perfect. I need the research. <laughs> so I'm excited to do that video. I think it'll be fun. And last, I got some things from Bookshop. They were doing some kind of sale. Honestly, I can't even remember what it was. I think it was their anti-Prime Day sale where there was free shipping. So I ended up picking up Melt With You by Jennifer Dugan because I really enjoyed playing for keeps. Is that what it was called? Fallon and Chloe used to be best friends, but last summer they hooked up right before Chloe left for college and after a series of misunderstandings, they aren't even speaking to each other. A year later, Chloe's back home from school and Fallon is doing everything in her power to avoid her, which is especially difficult because their moms own a business together, a gourmet ice cream truck where both girls work. That's me. I love that. I also really enjoy that Jennifer Dugan writes messy queer characters because that is my jam. Then I picked up Pretty, a memoir by KB Brookins. This was brought to my attention by Naomi over on Instagram. I'll have her link down below. She is a great follow. She recommends great books as well as indigenous literature. This is a memoir by a black trans writer and it's about queerness, masculinity, and race. And you know that is everything I love in a book. I love talking about masculinity as a trans man because it's messy. So I'm really excited to read this and also the cover is just stunning. As always, I will have links down below to all of the books. They are affiliate links. It is no extra cost to you, but I earn a small commission if you use my links, so thanks if you do. Now, for the finale, the books that I got from publishers. Macmillan Kids sent me Greta by J.S. Lemon, and this is a middle grade about grief. Sensitively told and stunningly written, J.S. Lemon's middle grade debut is an utterly transformative, fiercely original, and surprisingly funny story of friendship, healing, and a beauty that transcends all else. This might not be about grief, it does say healing, and I believe when I requested it, it was because of the grief. It also talks about puberty. Dial Press kindly sent me Most Wonderful by Georgia Clark, the author of It Had to Be You. This comes out October 15th and it is a queer holiday romance. I actually added the author's debut novel, This is the book that I was thinking of and this is the actual book by the author that I am referencing here. My bad. To one of my TBRs for a video, I've been planning the rest of my content for the year. And as always, I'm gonna do a video where I read queer holiday books and I'm probably going to do it for the week of the Queer Lit Readathon. So I'll link those details down below. It's the first week of December is when they're going to host it. So I was just looking for some holiday reads. So I was really glad when this showed up on my doorstep because maybe I can fit it into that video. A charming queer holiday romance about three siblings, each at a personal and romantic crossroad, who reunite at their larger than life mother's cat skillis manor for 
an unforgettable Christmas. I know I probably fucked that word up, but I have no idea what that is. Alison Cochran says, a holiday romance that feels like the most wonderful time of year. As always, it'll be linked down below, but I'm really excited for this. So thanks so much, Dial Press, for sending me this. Now, I have so many packages here. I say so many, I think I have like four. Roaring Book Press or Fierce Reads sent me Thirsty by Jazz Hammonds. Thank you so much to them because I really enjoyed reading We Deserve Monuments. I love Jazz Hammond's writing and I'm so sad I didn't get a chance to finish that book. So that is my October priority. This is their new book, Thirsty. And that cover is so gorgeous. It's the summer before college and 18 year old Blake and her girlfriend Ella have one goal. Join the mysterious and exclusive Serena Society. The sorority promises status and lifelong connections to a network of powerful trailblazing women of color. Ella's acceptance is a sure thing. She's the daughter of Serena alum. Blake, however, has a lot more to prove. As a former loner from a working class background, Blake lacks Ella's pedigree and confidence. Luckily, she finds courage at the bottom of a liquor bottle. When she drinks, she's bold funny and unstoppable and the Serena's love it but as pledging intensifies so does Blake's drinking. Ella assures Blake that she's fine. Partying hard is what it takes to make the cut. I might add this to my Black Ween TBR because wow that sounds fantastic. I saw a lot of great reviews about this and I know that this author is beloved so I would really love to read this for Black Ween. If you don't know about Black Ween I'll have Brie's video down below. Brie over at the Lockbook Titian created Black Ween a couple years ago. It is a month-long readathon in October prioritizing reading crime fiction from Black authors. She has a whole map and a town. It is so amazing. Definitely go and check it out and try and fit it in for October. Even if you just read one book, I would love for more people to know about Black and Wayne, so definitely go and check out Bree's video. Oh my god, this book looks huge. <laughs> April 15th, 2025, and it is The Influencers by Anna Marie McLemore. That is huge. Thank you so much to Katie over at the Dial Press because she is amazing and has been uplifting and doing so much great work for queer influencers in the book space. So shout out to Katie because without her, I would literally not have any of these books in my hand. As soon as I was pitched this, it just sounds amazing. A social media influencer's empire is burned to the ground, literally. The top suspects, the five daughters who made her famous. A campy and escapist exploration of race, gender, sexuality, and class. The influencers is an evisceration of influencer culture and how alienating traditional expectations can be. Ripe for the current moment when the first generation of children made famous by their parents are now all grown up and looking for retribution. I cannot wait to read this. I am very passionate about the topic of children, actors, and influencers, and how shitty and terrible family vloggers are, and that they just need to be erased from humanity and the whole internet. I hate it. I hate when I'm scrolling TikTok or even YouTube and I see a child and I'm just like, no, we're not doing this. We're not doing this, please. So I'm really interested to see how this book goes. And like I said, it comes out April 2025. That's, yeah, that's a big boy right there. Penguin Random House sent me Lucy Uncensored. Wait, I love this. I actually love this. When Lucy imagines college, she sees a fresh start. Yes, it will be a chance to party with other drama nerds and be roommates with her best friend Callie, but more important, she'll be able to introduce herself as Lucy to the people she hasn't gone to school with since kindergarten. In this panicked late night internet rabbit hole, Lucy finds a beautiful school with a great theater program on a list of the most LGBTQ plus friendly colleges, except the school is hundreds of miles from home and there's something unexpected about it. It's a woman's college. As far as Lucy can tell, they've never admitted a trans woman and will the student community truly accept her if they do? Wow, this sounds fantastic. And look at the trans flag in the background. Um, this might have already come out. I don't know when this came out. I'll put it on the screen, but this sounds fantastic. Thanks so much to Penguin Random House for sending it over. And the final book is from Holiday House. This is Rosdemir is Not the One by Leela 
Breton, a not-quite rom-com starring a bold, outspoken anti-heroine. This Turkish-American Romeo and Juliet remix is refreshingly snarky, from Raz's very first screw-up to her unconventional happy ending. Sounds cool. Thanks to Holiday House for sending it over. And that is everything I acquired in the last couple months. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to give it a thumbs up. It really helps out my channel when you do so. And let me know in the comments what book interests you the most that I talked about. Thanks again for watching and I hope to see you in my next video very soon. Bye.